G'day, I'm Chris Muir, and in this video, we're going to explore how to make use of the camera in an Oracle Max application. Cameras and mobile devices are nearly synonymous today, leaving mostly camera enthusiasts to reach for a more traditional camera such as a DSLR. As a result of cameras being readily available on our mobile devices, it makes sense to make use of them in our mobile apps too. So maybe in a HR app, allowing employees to update their personal photo, or say maybe in a car insurance app, giving a customer the ability to load a photo from the mobile photo gallery of a car accident they were involved in, to submit their insurance claim straight away, straight from the mobile device. For whatever you need, Max makes it fairly easy to do this, to include camera support. Essentially, we need to build on the MCS side a custom API capable of serving and updating images. Then on the Mac side, we must find pages to view the images as well as capture new images from the camera or the photo gallery. So let's explain this diagrammatically so you understand what you exactly need to build. So our app may be comprised of a page to display all the employees as a list, which includes their name and their photo. The employee then selects a specific employee in the list to drill down to a details page where we can see more information about that employee. In order to edit the photo, the employee taps the photo which opens a new details page where the user can invoke the camera and then take a new photo or select one from the mobile's photo album. Okay, so let's consider what needs to be built on the MCS side to allow the Max app to do this. In order to support the parent list of employees screen, showing the employee photo and name, we need to provide a get endpoint, returning all employees. In terms of the payload, it would return something like this, an array of employees, each employee with an ID, name and photo. As example here, we can see employee ID 1 is Joe, 2 is Fiona, 3 is Alan, and so on. Questionably though, what data type does the photo need to be? This answer is based on the requirements of Max. When we display images in Max, images can either first support a URI to fetch the image from some remote server. So MCS supplies a URI value and Max uses that URI value to go off and get the image. Alternatively, Max supports displaying Base64 encoded strings of the image, which we stream straight through from the MCS API. So with these two options in mind, which you choose depends on where you're storing your images. And we'll come back to this in a moment. Returning to our app and moving beyond the list screen and considering the detail screen, in order to support the typical fetch, create, update, delete actions, we need to provide get, post, put or patch and delete endpoints for individual employees in the collection. For the get employees ID method, like the get employees collection method, for any specific employee fetched, the endpoint needs to return the photo as a URI or a base64 encoded string too, as we explained earlier. As for the endpoints to create or update the employee, that is post, put or patch, it's important to note for the camera support we're about to investigate in Max, you do not supply the photo through the employee payload. Rather, what Max requires is for us to create an additional post endpoint for the specific employee to upload the photo. So here I've specified a new post employees method by ID and then photo. For our app, when we allow the user to take a photo via the camera and then we want to store it off device in MCS, it is this specific endpoint that will accept the image. In order to do this, it must accept the MIME type of application octet stream which is the binary encoded image captured by Max via the camera and transmitted to the MCS post photo endpoint that we just defined. Questionly then, once the MCS post endpoint receives the image within the custom API code, where does the image then go? Well, that's up to you. Via your custom API Node.js code that you write, you might store the image, say, in MCS or you might store the image in another Oracle Cloud offering, such as an Oracle DBAS, or you might pass it onto an on-premise server to store images. You could even pass it to a remote CDN server. Ultimately, you will write the code to do this, and it's your choice where to store the photo. We're giving you the flexibility to store it anywhere. However, remember, eventually the app will want to show the images in the list of detail screens we were talking about earlier. 
either by calling the get employees for the collection or get employees by ID for a specific employee as we described earlier. Now each of those endpoints will then need to fetch the data from wherever you choose to store the image. And of course remember when those endpoints return the image, remember that the max image component can only display images as URIs or base64 encoded images. So if you choose to use URIs, then when you store the image, be it an on-premise server or remote CDN or whatever, that image must be served publicly by the URI you provide so the max image component can then fetch it and display it. Alternatively, if you choose to display a base64 encoded string or the base64 encoded image as a string, then when the MCS custom API fetches the employee data, which includes the image, in your custom API Node.js code in MCS, you will need to deal with converting the binary image into a base64 encoded image for Max to handle. Okay, so this explains the full life cycle of what we need to build on the Max side, as well as what we need to build on the MCS API side. What I'd like now to do is demonstrate building all of this. So, first we'll focus on building the MCS API, then we'll build the Max application. So logging into MCS as, say, Jeff the Service Developer, via the API screen, I'm going to create a new API called HRDemo as an Express API. Now, you don't have to use the Express API wizard. You can build the API manually. But the Express API wizard makes this easy to demonstrate for this video. Having created a new API via the Express API wizard, I'll then create a new resource via the Resources wizard, naming the resource Employee, plural, Employees, which will represent the employee data the Max app will eventually show. Now, continuing the wizard for the moment, I'll add some sample data, just containing some names for now. Note how I'm not adding the employee ID or photo fields just yet. But moving on to the fields, we can see the wizard has already created an implicit primary key ID to identify each employee. Then in the final page of the resource wizard, we can see that MCS will create endpoints to get and list all the employees. And for each employee endpoint to create, find, edit, and delete each individual employee. Once the wizard is complete and the employee resource is created, we then want to add the photo field. And we've deliberately left this to last because we need to set a special data type. By clicking on the new field button, I'll create a new field called photo. In terms of the data type, as we explained earlier in the video, the max image URI component is only capable of showing images based on URIs or base64 encoded strings. So for the photo field, we either select the URI type or a string type. Now for this video, I'm simply going to use base64 encoded strings as I don't have a remote server to upload or serve our images from, just MCS itself. In terms of sample data, we can see the records I added earlier in the wizard. MCS has also allocated unique IDs for each employee. And we can see the empty photo field we just created. Now, I just happen to have an image already converted to a basic 64 encoded string, so I'll copy these in here, and we'll see these in the Max Preview Editor later. Now, as a reminder, we also need to provide an endpoint to accept any photos captured by our camera in our Max app, and it needs to accept the image as an application optic stream MIME type. To do this in our custom API, we select the Methods tab, then New Custom Method option. We then create a post method called Photo. And once created, we'll drill down, select the Request definition, and change the media type to application optic stream. Once done, we select OK, then save. Having done this, this completes the definition of the API. So from there, as Jeff, the MCS service developer, we need to build out the associated Node.js code for this API. Now, as a reminder, where you store the image, whether in MCS or another Oracle Cloud product such as the DBAS or an on-premise server at your site or a remote CDN server, it's all up to you. As a result, I can't show you a one-size-fits-all Node.js piece of code to solve all of these use cases. 
So what I'm going to do for this demo is upload some demo code I wrote earlier and make it available to you to look at via this URL. I, however, won't explain this code in detail as the demo code is not what you would write in a real application. It actually cheats by storing the images in MCS Node.js memory, which is meant to be stateless, so you shouldn't store anything in memory, and you would never use this in production, but it's perfect for demo purposes. In the implementation of the API, I'll upload the demo code ready for our API to use. Finally, returning to the API top level page, I must publish the API to make it available to Max to use. Alrighty, having built the API, we're then in a position to build the Max application as Mary the Citizen Developer. So I'll create a new app called HR, of which it has an opening page that is blank. In the Math Preview Editor, on the first page, I'll drop a list view from the Property Palette, and then in the Properties Inspector, change the layout of the list view. Next, in the Data tab, I'll select the Employee's Business Object, exposed from our HR API, and use its fields to populate the list view with their photo and name. On returning to the preview editor, we can now see sample data for the employees we entered into the API definition displayed in our list view live now. From here, I'll create a detail page such that when the user selects an employee, we navigate to a page with more detail on the employee that was selected. On this page, I'll drop a form to show the selected employee's ID and names, and finally their photo. Now, the photo is a bit small, though, of course, it's hard to see the details. So it would be good if we could use a full screen to view the photo. To do this, I will select the photo and add a tap action that allows me to create and open a separate detail page to work with the photo. In this detail page, we can drop an image component from the left component palette. Then on the right, in the property inspector, we change the image's read-only property to false, which allows users to update the image via the camera. Next, we map the image to our photo field, which represents the image to show and update. Now, notice that the image's action has automatically been mapped to the post photo endpoint we created earlier. Right, so if I now run and deploy the app to my actual device via the Oracle Mobile Application Accelerator Container app, log in as our mobile user, then select an employee and tap on their photo in the details page, on seeing the full size image of the employee, on selecting the image, you'll note that little edit icon in the top right. On selecting this invokes the device's camera, which first prompts us, do we want to pick a picture from the photo album or actually create a new image, we'll take a new image. And this is where I can take a fantastic selfie of myself to upload to the employee phone book application. Having uploaded the image, we can then navigate back to the details page and then employ this view where we can see the new image available. And voila, that's how we add camera support to our Max application. 
Right, as hopefully you can see from the Mac side, adding camera support is, well, really simple. Well, from the MCS API side, it's a bit more involved as you actually have to deal with well, where does the image go. Now, MCS simply doesn't know where you want to put the image, so as Jeff, the service developer, you need to write logic that fits your specific requirements. Overall, though, this shows you how to add camera support to your Max application. I hope you found this video useful. Hope to catch you in the next video soon.